So, as five years ago, I'm again impressed by seeing all these very experienced uh, surgeons and researchers. And but I'm also very impressed by the young researchers and the new groups and, and people coming here and showing their research. And I'm very sure that this is very important for the future. And there's nothing new because in history, this is the same thing. If you look at the very, very old researcher in Dupuytren, Dupuytren himself, and the very old researcher, Houston on the other side, then we'll see that actually we're all still having the same philosophies and it's not a, a, a bad thing to look at things again as long as we use what we know and what we've learned and that we find new ways of disease control, hopefully. So unfortunately, I do not have any conflict of interest to declare. As Caroline has said, uh, the recurrence, and as we all know, is the big frustration for the patient and the physician in the treatment of Dupuytren's disease, and it all de depends on how you define recurrence. You have, therefore, a lot of different recurrence rate reports, and it all also adds up to a length of follow-up, but uh, it influences, it's influenced by the procedure selection. And there's nothing new to that. I know, and we all know that Dupuytren fibrosis, diathesis, uh, influences uh, the, the prognosis of the disease and the prognosis of your outcome. And already in the 80s, Houston has uh, mentioned the factors of early onset and family history, bilateral disease, and ectopic disease, so it's not new. And even on pathogenesis, uh, Houston has uh, said a lot. Um, it was very difficult, Marike, to find a picture of Houston, and I think this one is right because I saw the, the picture of, by David Elliott, um, and I think it's the same person, but also in an <laughs> other era. Big so I think it, it's correct. It was from the Memorial Library of Miami, so maybe Charlie knows that. Um, so there's nothing new uh, on, on the pathogenesis. We know more and more, but uh, even in the past, a lot of things have been said, and that's why we wanted to revisit the, the results of full thickness grafting. Is it true that there is no recurrence under the full thickness grafting? Um, and uh, is there no new nodule under this uh, new skin? Uh, which, of course, if we start research, we always have additional questions. And that's sometimes the threat of doing good research. You start uh, posing too many questions. Um, so we had some additional questions. Is the fo length of follow-up uh, important? And uh, is the diathesis the most important factor for recurrence? But we wanted, just wanted to see, actually, if there was no recurrence under the grafts. So, Marike. Hello, everyone. So um, we reviewed 47 patients with an overall sex distribution of 87% male and 13% female. The follow-up time was 3 to 16 years, and the diathesis score, based on risk factors as introduced by uh, APE, was uh, calculated. Um, also, the quick dash score was filled in by the patients. Through clinical examination, we evaluated the presence of uh, recurrence or extension after full thickness skin grafting. Uh, herefore, we discriminated recurrence from false recurrence and extension. So true recurrence was defined as the development of new lesions of uh, Dupuytren's disease in the area where pre previous surgery had been performed. False recurrence was determined as, a non, as a consisting of non-developing scar contracture, joint contracture, and extrinsic tendon imbalance. Uh, due to surgical complications. And we determined extension as appearance of lesions outside the operated area where previously no disease had been detected. So the results. Um, the true recurrence rate underneath the skin graft was 0%, which confirms the early findings of Houston. The mean age score was 4.5, so quite high, uh, meaning um, a higher risk for recurrence, but we didn't see any of it in our study. The mean follow-up time was eight years and four months. Secondly, false recurrence was seen in 50% of the cases. Um, in one case, it was uh, due to that the skin graft was uh, infected. 
or uh, the skin graft didn't took completely, and in four other cases because the scar tissue underneath the skin graft uh, originated from previous surgery for a Dupuytren disease in this area. However, the extension, um, the disease extension in 83% of the cases, mainly affecting the PIP joint of the fifth digit and the mean APE score of this group was 4.7, whereas it was only 3.4 in the group without extension. So concluding that a high degree of diathesis is important for extension of the disease after surgical management. Um, at last, uh, the patients rated the surgical outcomes as good or excellent in 91% of the cases. The other 9% had complaints of paresthesias or um, co-sensitive fingers to cold. Great. So we concluded that indeed there must be something important by, uh, with replacing the skin uh, because we didn't see any recurrences under the skin graft. And it was true that all these people had a high fibrosis diathesis, as you can see. This is an, uh, a decision of the surgeon, and probably the surgeon knows that this patient is prone to recurrence. Uh, the extension is therefore also uh, related to fibrosis di diathesis, and there are some risks to the surgery. It's more elaborate, and we can have some complications as infection and ne necrosis, which compromise outcome. So. This is what we see in the literature as well. In the beginning of the full thickness graft mentioning, this is the literature after Houston, you see that the, the enthusiasm was very high, then it got somewhat lower and recurrences were reported again, but it's not clear that this was a, actually extensions or recurrences. And lately, we were visiting uh, full thickness graftings again with uh, better definitions. But again, I want to tribute uh, some honor to Houston because if you look more and more into his history, which looks kind of modest but because it's difficult to find, but if you see on all the mentionings he has done in the medical literature, he's used a lot of terms that we use today. Uh, which we did not copy paste, we reinvented some of these things, which is not bad, but we need to continue, of course, the search uh, for, for uh, a better treatment uh, plan for the Ductrin patient. He even used, as m some of you might know, uh, collagenase like products in 71, which he published in Dupuytrens. So I think that we still, there is a place for full thickness grafting um, for disease control and it might be important to uh, avoid severe recurrent disease or uh, to use it in complex uh, revision surgery and of course technically to cover skin defects. And I think we need to continue the search on the role of the skin in Dupuytrens disease uh, and the role of the full thickness grafting in surgery uh, because we have seen ourselves that the myofibroblast actually attaches to the skin and this might be one of the reasons of success of our cellulose implants. Um, so thank you for your attention.